Hey Church, it's really great to be with you and um, sharing today's devotional with you on the theme of my favourite verse. It's a real honour and a privilege. Um, my name's Esther and I'm part of the leadership team at North Campus. Um, my family and I have been coming to Audacious um, since about 2016. Um, and we moved from Central to North shortly after that started because that's the community that we live in and we thought it would be great to attend a campus where, where we live and where we work. So, today's theme, my favourite verse. Full disclosure right off the back, my favourite verse is actually three. Um, it's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 16 to 18. All three verses are very short, so they kind of all go together. Um, but we will just be looking at verse 16, um, which is actually only two words, which you'll find out. I would encourage you to read uh, Paul's letters to the Thessalonians um, to give you that broader uh, perspective of the conditions in which they were um, and, and in what context Paul was writing these letters. and. In summary, Paul had had to leave Thessalonica um, and whilst away after he'd gone, the Thessalonians, they started to um, have some doubt, I suppose. They felt a bit vulnerable. They were facing persecution. They didn't understand um, what was going on. Some of their elders had also died and they were concerned that they weren't properly saved when they died. And they just really started to to get some doubt um, in their faith as a result of that kind of vulnerability of being on their own after Paul was there, really ministering and teaching them. And then he left and they just suddenly thought, you know, we don't know what we're doing. Um, we're not sure if our teachers are qualified. We don't know. We don't know whether we're prepared for when Jesus returns. So this letter from Paul to them is very much a letter of encouragement. Paul's letters tend to have different themes and different tones. Some are very admonishing, some are just a love letter. This is really a, a, an informal, personal letter from Paul's heart to them, um, encouraging them and urging them to keep going, that they are saved and they, they're, they're doing the right thing. It, it's, all, it's all good. So I would encourage you to, to read it um, and read the whole chapter. But the verse, um, or the three verses that I um, love and have always loved is 16 to 18. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And I just love that. It's um, an inscription on my Bible that my dad um, gave me. It's just, those three verses have just been with me throughout my life. I know that in different seasons that I've been in, you know, God has pointed me to different different parts of the Bible and different verses which have, have seen me through a, a particular circumstance or a season that I've been walking through. But this has been consistently with me. I, I had to say it for as long as I can remember. I remember my dad um, writing it in one of my textbooks at school when I was sitting my GCSEs, you know, just, it, it's just always been there and I've always kind of loved it. But <clears throat> I suppose the challenge in it is when you really read it. I mean, I know that that kind of, those three verses together, they could be a poster above your desk. It's all kind of, it could be treated quite touchy-feely. Yeah, I'll rejoice. Yeah, I'll have Thanksgiving in my heart. It's not until you're challenged and you really unpack it that this seemingly simple, um, simple instructions. So rejoice always. It's simple. I'm a Christian. Joy is a uh, fruit of the spirit. I, I get that I'm called to rejoice always. But when you're faced with a very deep valley, a very dark, harsh season, it's very easy to ignore. And I have done in the past. I suppose I've kind of just gone, well, I get that I rejoice always, but I'm not doing that at this moment in time because life's too difficult. Oh, I'm not giving thanks just yet. I'll give thanks for that, but I'm not giving thanks for the bad things. 
Um, and my dad died um, at the end of January, very suddenly, very unexpectedly. Um, and like anybody that loses a parent or somebody very close, you just plummet. The darkness, there's just the pain, the physical pain was, was excruciating actually. And you know, me and my family are still work, walking through that. But in his final hours, when we knew he was, he was going, I turned to God as, as a family we did that, we, we prayed um, and I read the Bible and I was really looking for that verse that God was going to give me for, for this season. And all I kept hearing was rejoice always, rejoice always, rejoice always, Esther. And I was like, no, nah, that's, that's not possible. That verse is not for this season. How can I possibly rejoice when I'm, I've lost my dad? That's, that doesn't make sense. And I'm, I, I can't even begin to, to explore that. But I did, because that's what I kept on getting. Rejoice always. And I meditated on those two words. I prayed on them. I didn't want to. <laughs> I didn't get it. I was a bit cross, if I'm honest. I was thinking, please, you know, I need, you know, I need a, a, a nice word of comfort. I don't, I don't want to rejoice. Don't, please don't ask me to do something that I really, my circumstances do not lend itself to rejoicing right now. So give me something else. But anyway, I, I didn't. I, I ask God, how do I rejoice? Why do I rejoice? And, you know, what came out of that, and that's for another time, that's, I haven't got the time to go into it now. When I looked into why and how, and when God showed me why as Christians, we can rejoice always. It was the most comforting balm in my grief. I could have ever asked for and at the beginning I was just having resisted it so much and didn't get it having really leaned into that um, that simple instruction to rejoice always brought me such calmness I felt so loved I knew that everything was and is okay and that's part of the point for me with this the rejoice always is a joyful instruction but the challenge is the point that we step outside of our circumstances and that we don't rely on the feelings that are given to us and dictated by our circumstances you know my default um natural position was i am not rejoicing i'm mourning i'm sad so how can I rejoice? But when you press into that, when you when you remove yourself from that and say, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be dictated by the feelings that events here put upon me because I'm not part of that. I am a daughter of God. I am. Um, I have a wonderful heavenly Father, and I've given been given eternal life through Jesus Christ. How wonderful. And I will base my joy and my response to things based on biblical truths and not my circumstances. And I know that everything is well now. I'm still walking through grief. This is still the season. It's a season of change. It's a season of upheaval and um, upset and could be quite scary but I'm concentrating on those instructions. I'm concentrating on what the biblical truths are, that how God wants me to live my life is to rejoice always, pray without ceasing, ceasing, and in everything give thanks. And I can't tell you, church, how that removal from your situation to where your heart is and how the state of your soul and your faith is just marvellous 
as citizens of heaven, we can rejoice always, no matter what the circumstances are. There is nothing, nothing that can rob us of our joy. And I just think that that is so powerful, puts you right in line with where God wants you to be. And, um, and it can get you through some of the darkest times. So I could go on a lot more. I'm so, I love this, these verses so much. Um, and I really would encourage you to, to read it. And I would encourage you to, to challenge God to, to, as I did, and just say, I can't possibly rejoice in this time. My circumstances don't match um, what you're asking me to do. And I can honestly say that it will bring you great joy. Um, okay, so thank you very much for listening. Have a great week. Um, stay well, stay safe. And we'll see you soon.